Welcome back to our Tuesday discussion. I know the weather is super nice outside at the moment and it's really tough to come inside and spend at least an hour in, in the coldness here. Um, so today we have another session of our Tuesday discussion. My name is Gisa Ludicke. I'm the Director of Graduate Programs here at the Rachel Carson Center and together with Professor Christoph Mauch, the Director of the Carson Center, I'm moderating the Tuesday discussion this semester and today it's my turn and I'm very excited that we have two fantastic guests here today. Uh, I'm going to introduce them to you in a second. Um, they both work at the Hans Sauer Stiftung, the Hans Sauer Foundation here in Munich, which they will introduce to us in a second, so this is why I'm not saying anything about the Stiftung itself. Um, so I'll start with Nadia. Um, Nadia Hempel is, or actually we both have something in common, which I only quite recently learned, is that because we have the same uh, university that we come from, Lafana University, and we basically studied the same study program, but I did like the great-grand-grand-grandfather version of what she did, which was uh, environmental sciences back then, and then they developed and advanced it into the Master of Sustainability Sciences. This is what uh, Nadia did, and she wrote her master thesis about the concept Come on in. about the concept of circular society as a starting point for transformation processes. So she is actually an expert uh, on the topic that we're going to hear about today, circular society. And next to her is Barbara Lersch. Barbara Lersch is also working for the Hans Sauer Stiftung and she has a master in music and cultural management from the University of music and theater, which is based here in Munich in this beautiful area in the Pinakotheken, uh, between the Pinakotheken, and she has also a background in design thinking. She uh, has her focus uh, at the Hans Sauer Stiftung on knowledge transfer in the field of social design. We're going to learn, I think, about what social design is today because maybe we just have like blurry concepts in our heads, what, what that means, and of course also in um, circular society. So both uh, say that capitalism is a linear economic model that kind of like functions the way that we, we take, make and waste, so dump and throw away, and that needs to be transformed into a cyclical system that follows the approach, make loops, not lines. Um, and this is what we're going to hear about today from, the bo from both of you. Maybe just one little more fun fact is there, I remember we had a person here, was that you who's a climber, who's interested in climbing? No, it was Warren, but I can let her know. Okay, because <laughs> 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 I wanted to make connections between our climbing community here because Nadia is actually a, a passionate outdoor climber in, in the Munich area and she and a friend uh, founded the climbing project called EcoPoint Frankenjura. I think, I guess Frankenjura is, is an area where you have like perfect climbing yeah. conditions. And they want to encourage climbers to choose sustainable modes of transport when they travel to these remote places to climb. So if you happen to have any climbing friends, <laughs> connect them with Nadja. All right, so um, now I'm moving out of sight. And um, it's great having you here. Thank you so much for coming. And everyone, please help me in welcoming our two guests. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. So I don't need to tell you who that is. That is my colleague, Nadia and Barbara. Uh, we are very happy to be here. We heard a lot about the center in the past, and so it's uh, nice to finally be your guest today. Um, so we're going to talk about the circular society, and actually um, we want to tell you a little bit about what we think circular society is, so some theoretical background, and what the foundation does to foster circular society in a way. Um, so I'm going to start with some information about the foundation and then pass on to Nadia. First of all, I want to ask one question. Who has an idea of what circular society is, please? Okay, and who knows what the circular economy is? Okay, so a bit familiar. So I will um, just say a few sentences about Hans Sauer. Um, Hans Sauer founded the Hans Sauer Foundation in 1998. He's actually the, um, he um, invented the relay, which is like an electronic switch, I would say. 
Uh, and I will read that out to you because I did not know it by heart. Hans Sauer established his foundation with a vision that future innovations would generally arise from a social and ethical motivation and thus provide measurable and tangible social and ecological benefits. So that means that we more or less work uh, in the field of social innovation and we do that uh, operative and uh, funding wise so we have like 80% of our work is operative work and 20% of the work which is fund projects in different working areas uh, on which I will um, talk more later. So, as I said, the 80% of work we do more or less under this roof. We founded the Social Design Lab uh, four years ago because we found out that it's, as a foundation it's far easier to have an extra kind of institution to work with because foundations are always known as a funding organization and we, we do operative work, so we founded the Social Design Lab to um, actually try to transform society with the methods of um, social design. So what are methods of social design? Um, this is actually in German, but I think um, it's not a big problem because the words are kind of similar in English. Uh, we have um, principles we are working in in this um, social design lab, so in our operative projects. We always work participatory, we always work transdisciplinary, and we always work um, with the met methods of design and innovation. As you can see on the right, this is the process we are always working in. It's iterative, uh, it's always open, so we never ever decide from the beginning what will come out in the end. And yeah, I'm not going much deeper in the, in the process because, because then it gets quite uh, yeah, difficult and I think we will want to concentrate on circular society today. So we are working in the social design lab in three different fields at the moment and um, the first one is social spaces design. You can see it on the right. This is one of the operative project projects in Stuttgart. It's called Home Not Shelter. It's mm, about uh, integration and inclu inclusion. So how can we design spaces between, for example, neighborhoods and uh, refugee camps. Then we work in the field of transformative cities. You can see that here on the right. Uh, for example, we do a, a process right now for the um, city of Munich. We develop together with many experts the Leitlinie Bildung, which is a vision for the education, uh, education and how you would say? The vision for education in Munich. Probably that's the question. Okay. And we're working in the field of circular society. We go closer in our activities later on after we explained, or Nadia explained you what for us the circular society actually is. Yeah, and to start with, why do we work with the term of circular society? Because fact is that our economic system at the moment is in a deep crisis. And the economic system at the moment is a linear system. So I think we all, um, there's a consensus that we need transformation towards sustainability. And one sustainability strategy um, that has a big hype at the moment is circular economy. The hype is not only in science, but also in, uh, in the um, economic world, so amongst companies but also um, when you s uh, look at the city level, for example. So there are many cities that want to become circular economy or circular Berlin, circular Amsterdam, circular c cities. And um, what are the potentials of the circular economy? Is that um, at the moment, the linear economy, we have a lot of input from uh, of resources. So at the moment we extract huge amounts of raw material, then produce stuff like products and um, services, and at the end it gets all dumped, disposed. And of course there's a lot of potential lost in reusing this material. And also in um, narrowing down the need for input for materials right at the beginning. Then the second step 
or where we are also at the moment, for example in Germany, would be a recycling economy, where we still have the same amount of materials that we use that get into the system, but then we make like uh, some effic more efficient loops, we recycle plastics for example, we keep it in the system, but at the end there's still uh, a lot of waste there. So it doesn't change a lot about the input-output. And then the next step uh, would be to design out waste. So not only look at the end of pipe solutions, but start right at the beginning when we design products to make them uh, reusable, repairable, uh, uh, separate, how do you say it, like to separate compounds and to think about this right at the beginning of design processes. And this is the big potential of circular economy concepts. And there are a lot of different business models around it, uh, a lot of different technical um, processes that allow for cir circular products in the end. Um, one very famous uh, graphic and also organization behind the circular economy is the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And they say that there's basically a biological cycle and a technical cycle. So that, for example, a smartphone with technical components uh, cycles in those technical loops where we have, for example, um, we can care about it, we can repair it, we can reuse components of it, recycle components. And then on the other side we have, for example, um, bowls made out of wheat, uh, which can be then cascaded and composted and brought back into the biological cycle. And they say that we need always products um, which only are in this technical cycle or on the biological cycle or where we can uh, separate those components. Um, and also what is different to the recycling economy is that there's more responsibility also on suppliers and manufacturers in the system and not only on the consumers and users at the end of the uh, value chain. Now, as we see, the circular economy is a promising sustainability strategy and we think that without a circular economy we can't move towards this transformation. But still, in the Ansar Foundation and with the academic colleagues we work with, we think, we think that it's insufficient. Um, maybe some of you know The Little Prince, um, the book. And in the words of the little prince, uh, we could say that many big people see in circular economy approaches a fancy hat that can be worn with anything and solves any hair problems. But if we put on critical glasses, we can see the big elephant of CE approaches quite clearly. And big elephant means here um, that there is a big issue in the room that an anyone knows about and anyone sees, but still uh, no one talks about it and it's ignored. And re according to uh, recent research, the question of growth is perhaps the largest elephant in the room for the circular economy discourse. So it's not really tackled. But it's not the only elephant, there are quite um, some more, but we today just talk about uh, the three big brothers amongst the elephant, which are economic growth, rebound effects and the missing social dimension. And as um, we already got introduced, uh, we see economic growth also as one of the biggest ones because in the world of finite resources, a finite, infinite growth is quite uh, questionable. So many circular economy approaches say that we can live in abundance if we just design products right. If we just design them circular, then we can produce as much as we want, we can have as many desires as we want, 
But on the other side are arguments of degrowth, agrowth or selective growth advocates that say no, in a world of finite resources that's just impossible. Then also there's a lack of so social and political dimension, so questions like who benefits from circular systems, who can participate in them and who creates this change, these transformations aren't addressed a lot. And last but not least, rebound effects that occur when you look only on efficiency and consistency and not so much on su sufficiency um, are still a problem. So increased demand outweighs the savings potential of efficiency or consistency measures. And because of this critique at the Hansau Foundation, uh, we started to work with the term of circular society because we also see that the economy can't be just uh, seen as a system apart with its own goals, but needs to be understood as embedded in society. And if we have a look on this slide, we can, I think, quite clearly see what it is, what this transformation also needs more than just technical and business model innovation. It's about changing institutions, about changing laws, rules and standards, actually our whole educational system and the knowledge and skills that we uh, teach in them. And it also tackles attitudes and values such as is a new and shiny product uh, worth more than a used product and a product of history maybe? And this goes like into our very behaviors, our ways of life, our norms. And last but not least, if we want to um, really um, conceive this transformation, more collaboration is needed between different branches, between different companies, with citizens, uh, with municipalities. And that's why at the Hansala Foundation we made a first draft of principles for a circular society and the first three principles that you can see on the slide are basically the same as in the most common circular economy uh, approaches so it's about designing out waste about keeping the resources we designed and used in use and about regenerating systems but then we think that it's also uh, about normalizing sufficiency and redefining value and progress so that at, before designing new products we think we should ask ourselves do, do we need this product, do we need this service or can we um, exchange it with immat immaterial uh, processes for example or just uh, yeah uh, just uh, don't produce at all and then if we say, yeah, it is necessary, then we want to design smart and efficient. And also, if we look at this whole transformation, it's more about um, fostering participation and social cohesion so that this transformation towards circular systems is just and uh, affects a broader society. And for that we need to assure transparency and accessibility and advancing circular literacy. And how this is, like this is now very theoretical or the basic assumptions of our work and how it looks like when we really uh, dive into the field uh, will be shown by Barbara. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to show you some examples of how we try to foster the circular society because we think um, we need some operative work to really bring it in the field more or less. So um, this is um, a little bit of history. We started with the uh, circular society term in 2017. We wrote that brochure uh, from Take Make uh, uh, Dispose to a Circular Society. It's a, no, that's not our paper. Our positions paper <laughs> is 2020. We wrote that. Actually, all the um, slides you just saw are out of this paper. We can, we actually will um, post it later on. Um, but this was like more or less the basic um, 
yeah knowledge research we did and then we started really like our operative work um, we found another researcher Melanie Jäger Erben in Berlin at the TU uh, and we started to co collaborate with her um, and we put up this first circular society gathering out of that um, we um, did a circular society forum uh, that was like during COVID so it was of course uh, digital and there were like uh, I think 200 people taking part yeah it was like the the total numbers of yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so a lot of people uh, showed up who were interested in the subject and so we thought we need to to really put the the subject on our agenda and so we um, wrote a very big um, antrag uh, proposal, proposal um, at the DBU, the Deutsche Bundesstiftung Umwelt, to write a roadmap to a circular society. So the roadmap to a, a circular society which started a year ago is a process with like f uh, 40 experts um, and we are meeting in different groups to work on different subjects of the um, of the circular society. I will show you a graph later. It's actually coming after the all the the operative stuff we're doing around. We are giving out a prize every year, so the Hans Sauer Prize. We did three prizes on the uh, subject of circular society building environment, circular cities, so we always use the prizes, the awards, to do some research and learn more about what's happening out there. That's like the, um, yeah, the, we want to achieve just research with the award. Um, we did a project in Mark Schwaben, which is a small town close to Munich, and they have a recycling center, and we tried to open up or change the recycling center um, to a Mehrwerthof, so more than a recycling center, more or less, um, and to kind of yeah, let civil society participate in, in that space. That <coughs> actually didn't work as planned because the mayor in the end decided that it's probably not as um, economical as thought. Um, we did a project together with the TU Munich where uh, architects built um, city furniture out of recycled material and we did this process with the civil society and they decided where to put it. Um, we have a project, it's called Circular West End. Um, it's about food waste and uh, how to bring food waste back in the loop. For that we put this container, this, uh, this kitchen container on the Theresienwiese where we did workshops and educated about food waste. Um, we did, uh, actually we took part in an exhibition. I, we cura curated a little bit in that exhibition. It was on material uh, loops, so on looping materials, on recycling and upcycling uh, materials. Uh, that was in Berlin at the Kunstgewerbe Museum. And we developed this Circular Society Toolkit, which is like a game to, more or less a game to learn more about the Circular Society and to dive deeper in the subject and get in discussion discussion about, um, about the Circular Society. Here you can see what I just told in the beginning. Um, this is our process on the, on the roadmap. Actually, we are more or less in the final here in the final phase of this um, roadmap, so we're just starting to write down um, the the yeah the final results of what the what is it, we and politicians and organizations and universities need to do to implement a circular society. Yes. Uh, ah, and we had we had the the funding program. It was called Kreislauf Verstehen. There we just uh, funded project who tried to educate more or less yeah children in what um, circle circularity means. Yeah, that was our very short presentation on uh, circular society. Um, it's kind of a complex. Thing, I would say like it took me about two years to really understand everything of it so I hope you have questions now that we can deep dive deep dive 
dive deeper in, in, yeah, in details. Thank you so much.